Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Limited Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. And this is part three of our Xcode um, in app purchase tutorials. Now, just to recap to where we've gotten to so far, in part one, we created the ID and then we created the in app purchase item and then kind of created the beginning of our project. Uh, in the last um, part, part two, we completely coded the application. We enabled us to um, gather the information from the, in, um, from the purchase item and display it and be able to purchase the item and restore it if we purchased it before. But what we haven't done so far is once we've purchased it, save it to our application to let the application know that we've purchased it and display our purchased content every time we load the application. Because at the minute we've just like bought it and every time we build it we have to restore our purchases to get the purchase content back. So how we're going to do that is use um, NS defaults. Now it's a pretty simple process. If you jump into our view controller.m, um, the first thing we need to do then is a uh, just above the import, we need to go hash and then we go define and in the marker we do k underscore save space at symbol quotation mark quotation mark you can kind of create a little key here so saved item we'll simply call it and then we can now um, go to so basically when we purchase the item and obviously in our purchase voice down here when it gets triggered to display the uh, change the text that the item has been purchased in here we're also going to have a little save function but before we do that there's a little piece we missed out in our little button here so just after the uh, where we um, gather our, the um, identifier for our um, in that purchase item just um, place in this code to do um, two brackets SKQ default queue add transaction and then purchase controller this means when you press the button if we have purchased that item before, it will kind of preload if you like. Um... So basically, when you press it, if we have purchased it, it will kind of re download it instantly for you. So there's no need to go through the whole re um, storing the purchase kind of thing. That's when we missed that last one. So if you just add that in there. But now we can go straight to uh, placing our NS user default. So we do NS user default space. Asterisk and I simply save app. I simply name it equals space bracket ns user uh, default again space standard user defaults and then a bracket semicolon and then we do bracket saved save app how we set it to set ball in highlight section we do true. In the NS string here, we do the name of our little key we like kind of created. So k underscore save, and then we bracket semicolon. Then we enter, save app again, and then we synchronize it. There we go, and then we bracket in a semicolon. So that creates a little save function. So we've like kind of, kind of created a save point. But what it's saving, that's how we um, we're gonna kind of figure out now. So in the view did load. So what it's gonna basically save. So when if it has created that save point. When the view did load loads up, when the view loads up, it's going to load that save point. And if that save point has been saved, then it's going to do this. Else, if it hasn't been, hasn't been saved, then you know nothing happens basically. And what we're going to do is just copy this line here, save a little bit of time. So NS user defaults, save app, uh, NS defaults, uh, standard user defaults again. Then we do ball there, and I simply name it saved space equals space bracket save app space ball for key here in the NS string here we do k underscore save again and there a bracket semicolon then we do enter so we do an if statement so if uh, it has been saved or exclamation mark saved in here I'll just comment it now so not saved code here else saved code here so basically when the user purchases the item and it triggers our purchased statement here void statement it's going to create the save point so basically again once the user buys it it's going to save it and if it's saved 
whatever we've told it to do so we have told it that when you purchase the um, item it's going to change the text in our label then it's going to save it, it's going to load back up it's going to find that we saved it and display this information if it hasn't saved it it won't change the label at all so we don't need to put any code in there so that's kind of simply how you add the little save function so run through it once more once it loads up it's going to find like, if it saves, so if it doesn't save, no code and if it has found that it's saved, it will display our in-app purchase, what we purchased there. So if I just simply test it on our, my device now, now because it's the first time I'm going to build it to my device with this save function, we'll have to repurchase the item once more. Okay, so now we've built to my device, we go to buy item, then we go to buy, click buy again, now I'm going to use a whole new test account because we purchased it on our previous test account. So I'll use a new one so I can show you from start to finish what it'd be like when you buy it from the start. So use it, I'm going to put in my new test account um, password and um, email address, sorry. I'm just going to move this up here so you can't see my password. all the way up so you can't see on the keyboard what I'm typing to uh, I've pressed um, buy now you can see that the names changed to purchase so then if I go, go back you can clearly see item has been purchased so even if I you know close down the app here and then rebuilt it You can see when it loads up, it says item has been purchased. So it's kind of loading back up from where we left off. So that's simply how you save your in-app purchases. So I hope this helps in your app store project at the moment. Make sure you like and favorite the video so you have it for a future reference. Also check out all the apps which are currently on the app store by simply searching Geeky Lemon. Make sure you like and favorite us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all in our part four of our um, in-app tutorial kind of little series, mini series where I show you how to remove the ads just like by the same where I show you how to remove the ads when you've purchased your item. So again if you haven't make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all next time in our next Thank you for watching this tutorial by Geeky Lemon Development. Be sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook. Oh and check out all of their other tutorials and sample projects on their website geekylemon.com. But most importantly, please download their awesome iPhone and iPad apps by searching Geeky Lemon on the App Store. And please remember to subscribe.